subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Hi everyone, my name is Anita and I'm so excited to be here at SP Jain's campus today and uh, this particular interaction is very special to me because I'm going to be speaking with student, with the first student ever online live otherwise i've done so far all those videos uh, on a zoom platform so i'm very excited to be on the campus uh, i'm going to be speaking with Meethi, and she has made a very tough choice in terms of choosing research as a career choice which is more exciting for me to know that what made her to decide on her research choices why she took up uh, research as a career choice in the first place and why she took up a PhD FPA program at SPGen. So I am going to interact with her. She is right in front of me and first question to me, first question from me to her would be on her name. Who named you Meethi? My mother named me Meethi. Very beautiful name. Just communicate to your mother that it's a very beautiful yeah. name. Thank you. And, what motivated you to take up research career? Please brief me about your background first and then talk about the reason behind choosing research as a choice. So, I am an academic person by my, uh, you can say, the nature of personality. So, when I was in my undergraduate uh, years uh, studying BCom, I took a lot of interest in research and doing PhD. Hmm. And uh, post which, when I was doing my master's, we have to do research as a part of our master's program. Mm -hmm. So when we were doing that research, I realized how much this interests me and how much uh, this this is what I wanted to do at a later point in my life and not work in any corporate job or not do anything else, mm -hmm. but be a part of academia, be in the research field. So you want to be a core academician of that? Yes, yes. I Great. Do. So research mindset you've always, ha always had? Yes. Okay. So uh, what was your initial... Uh, search steps to look for a PhD program, if you could throw some light on that. So I started looking up uh, about what PhD programs are about, how the structures, the course structures are, what are my options when I was in second year MCOM and uh, based on my profile and how my education had been all these years, I looked up the eligible options, the places where I can apply and what else I can do to make my profile better mm -hmm. so basically you go about looking all the information online on different websites you talk to your friends and uh, people mm -hmm. who are doing PhD mm -hmm. or you are aware are doing PhD so when you look up the options a lot of uh, places come up in India also but uh, most of the good places require you to have a very strong profile in order to build your profile you need to have certain entrance exams qualifications like the gates you need to have those basic qualifications, mm -hmm. basic eligibility criteria. Mm -hmm. Once you have those, what counts is your research interest, your research proposals, and also your publications and your work ex and all that. In my case, I focused on having publications and also on you know uh, showing, uh, building a good research proposal because uh, I was not, I had just come out of MCOM, completed my master's, so I wouldn't have a lot of work ex. I wouldn't even have a lot of publications by that time. So I focused on building a good research proposal and making my subject knowledge, the background knowledge on the subject I was interested in strong. Would you like to tell about the subject first? Yes, my subject area was uh, is human resource management yeah. okay. and uh, I have uh, de I developed the interest in human resources mainly because I wanted to work on uh, understand how skilling activities are done, how uh, the human resource, because we have such a large population, so how to skill them, how to employ them, uh -huh. how can we make work life better for people out there. Mm -hmm. so that's how my interest in human resources developed. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so what I uh, eventually got around to looking at was a few different you know ideas keep coming, like there's HR analytics, which was pretty popular when I was doing my masters. Then there's sustainable human resource management. And I also developed quite a lot of, since my MCOM is, uh, was specialized in international business, I also developed a lot of interest in international HRM. Okay. So, and, and and I had friends who were planning to study abroad, or who, and I know people who plan to go abroad while they are working. So, you know, working out how people are understanding what their difficulties are when they are planning to go abroad, what opportunities they are looking for, 
and going to a different country, settling down, adjusting there is a big thing. So mm-hmm. studying all those things and how they are paid, how they are compensated mm-hmm. when you are working. Okay, everything under yeah. the HR yeah. umbrella. <laughs> yes, and yes. you must have studied all those things. Yes, yes, you okay. have to. Did you follow any book to s- prepare yourself? I'm honestly not nothing is specific. I focused mm-hmm. on what was my coursework in masters. So okay. as long as you are also very thorough on what you are studying during your masters years, it gives you a pretty good subject knowledge. Uh-huh. Okay, so, so you are already in this program for four months now. Yes. Uh, okay. No, it's been one and a half years almost. One and a half years. Okay, sorry. So you have already done your uh, coursework complete, and uh, one yes, and a half years are already passed. So yes. I would take you to your interview times. Okay. Yes. Um, you have to recall that interview moment for twenty, thirty minutes. You must be sitting in front of the panelists and uh, you know Honestly. panel members. So I would like you to recall, revisit those moments, mm-hmm. and if you can share two, three questions which were asked to you, um, so that the people who are listening to you will get, will have some idea that what kind of questions are being asked and what should they prepare for their interview process. So if you can throw some light on that, like two, three questions, if you. are able to recall okay so how the selection process generally goes in most institutes is you have to write some written exam clear the written exams and then when you are selected through written process you go through a interview selection process mm-hmm. written exam usually consists of uh, uh, testing your quantitative aptitude res- uh, reasoning skills logical and reasoning skills and your research aptitude and those all you can prepare if you are also Uh, studying for CAT or NET, the regular entrance exams, so it's more or less similar. Apart from that, sometimes uh, you have to do a subject area test also, which was also done in S P J M R. So, our subject area test uh, was about uh, we had to we had to read a paper on uh, a small context of a research paper and answer mm-hmm. questions based on that. So the paper was about the context was about what is good theory. Mm-hmm. You know why I remember this question because. Uh, even now we still debate on what is theory what is the importance of theory mm. and what are the qualities of a good theory if you anyone who is in academia will probably under- relate to this everyone still debates on what their understanding of theory is mm-hmm. and even i still look up to understanding why do we need a theory okay. at all so what do you think like what exactly they were looking for from this particular kind of uh, uh, step or the process i think this step was about understanding what our perspective for and okay. you know what our orientation is with respect to research are you able to gauge it or uh, yes are you able to read are you able to understand what yes. or not context okay. and okay. W- the answers that we give mm-hmm. i think that tells uh, someone whether you know do we really have uh, do we really understand research for what it is can mm-hmm. we really have that lens of looking into mm-hmm. and understanding why an author is writing what they are writing mm-hmm. why the research article like very recently in a paper development workshop the one of the key advices was read ev- when you are reading a research paper go through each paragraph uh-huh. and see what the author is telling in each paragraph that uh-huh. way you understand the flow of the paper okay so i think that that is important not every a normal person when they come and read a research paper i don't think they'll be able to make sense of that uh-huh. but as researchers that's a skill that we need to develop how to read and understand what the author is trying to tell you in a research paper mm-hmm. Okay. So so one and a half years already in, into the program. Yes. How is this feeling? I think if I have to answer it in terms of whether I understand a good theory or not, it is an ongoing debate. But I have directions how to answer now uh-huh. so because I've gone through so much of coursework, studied so many research methodologies. Uh, even in my area, uh, specialized areas. I think I know the direction when I want to answer mm-hmm. what if I want to understand the importance of theory. Mm-hmm. So we recently also had a case research methodology development workshop, mm-hmm. and in the workshop we focused on how we can study phenomena outside happenings mm-hmm. in either a company or in a, any particular geographical location mm-hmm. or any context that you take. You study that area, you research about it, and you understand the phenomena that is happening in outside world. and when you have studied a lot of such phenomena you are able to find something common that tells you that this is you know you, it's, it's called abstracting it mm-hmm. it's called abstracting the phenomena to a level where you can say that this is this exactly is what is happening people are thirsty and then that's why they drink water okay so it's like so are you associated with any of the centers uh yes we re- today we had a uh, discussion on center for um, wisdom and leadership uh-huh 
it's called so civil. I was expecting like uh, because you are from OBHR kind of domain so yes, definitely the center is uh, relevant for your relevant kind for of our context yes. okay so what about the term papers because you have already I'm sure you must have, might have started writing about term papers yes uh, so tell me about one or any any term paper you have written so far and would you like to convert into a research conference paper and ultimately a paper for a journal so what so, was the approach uh, for that so we have worked on a lot of term papers uh, for every seminar course we are required to have a term paper you know come up with a new idea write about it so recently for one of the sessions which was on management in society mm -hmm. we worked on a, i worked on a term paper which was based on understanding mental health of phd students okay very interesting <laughs> thank you <laughs> so the reason i picked up this topic is because we are also in the process and we know we are facing some problems so i want to understand i wanted to understand uh, the situation out there uh -huh. is this something that everybody faces so no kidding phd is a tough journey it is something full of struggles uh, and you know there are problems that only you will face so uh, when when i looked up uh, when i was researching to, uh, reading about it uh, through newspapers or other research articles uh, i came across the fact that phd students tend to be more depressed than other people like other academic scholars okay. but that is not to say that everyone is depressed or the path <laughs> what i'm trying to say is the journey is such that you will it is a lonesome problem. journey Love for lonesome sure journey, and yeah. we don't have answers to each and every, every question. question everybody is struggling in their own journey See, for that so there's fact, a peer the peer group is sometimes which is needed yes yeah so do you have that peer group here yes yes we we have actually from beginning of our course we have been told your cohort or your batchmates ha huh. are the best people you can get like they huh. will be with you throughout the journey ha huh. so you know get together and you know uh, build your network and spend time together go out work with each other collaborate with each other if required on different research projects talk to each other mm -hmm. and this is what i also found in my research also that despite the uh, problems that you might face the things that you will have for your help are the people around you your cohort your batchmate that you can talk to about your problems and discuss mm -hmm. it with mm -hmm. relationship with your supervisors which plays a very important role throughout the journey so mm -hmm. you know you are working on a project with them and this is going to stay this is going to be part of your life forever this is what will give you the doctorate the research work that you are doing moreover that thesis which you write like one of my friends said is going to be in that institution also forever that this mm -hmm. student worked on this thesis and mm -hmm. this was the topic so uh, for working on a topic uh, when you're working with someone else you know you'll ha always have a supervisor so building a good relations with with the supervisor is equally important mm -hmm. and apart from this uh, you also have to be able to take breaks okay so you know what what we used to do when i was doing my phd so with with each success story which each mm -hmm. achievement we used to celebrate we also celebrated our failures yes. because every time we learned something uh -huh. and we we wanted to celebrate that learning rather than you know celebrating that failure but we were celebrating that we were getting some learning out of it so mm -hmm. i think each step uh, in terms of uh, each failures and uh, success stories uh, success successes which we get we should celebrate those aspects so Uh, yes. i am sure your research which you are going to do on yes. uh, mental health and phd students mm -hmm. is going to bring that aspect as well uh, yes of course in fact uh, i worked uh, i looked up papers and they talk about the fact that p around phd students there is a small ecosystem a meso huh. system and huh. the entire system around phd students the system that exists we can use that system or leverage that system around us to help us do our research and to maintain a work life balance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so in that uh, ecosystem we have our institutions which mm. plays a very major role mm. so the strength that the or the support that the institution can provide you during this research is what matters because apart from you and your you know your research work the facilitator is the institution right you, the so institution tell me two three of. things which you got in terms of facilitation from the institution, institution spgen so in spgen you know if you read out there people talk about it that we don't get enough time with our supervisor sometimes we don't meet our supervisors for a month but till date in my experience in spgen i haven't heard any 
you know professor who said no i don't have time for uh-huh. this or i cannot give you time right so they now. give priority to students yes, especially even for 15 20 minutes they are available uh-huh. to talk to you give you some directions on what you are doing you may not find answers that's not the case the questions that you are asking are your own ha uh-huh. so the answers that you are looking for also something that you will find on your own uh-huh. but these people they just they can just guide you there mm-hmm. so even if they send spend 15 minutes with you and tell you that this is where you need to look at or maybe you just talk to this person they'll be helping out better so that help is always there in the mm-hmm. institution mm-hmm. and it's there with everybody starting from in the chairman of our programs now ma'am to everybody down to you know all the assistant associate professor and to every even our own so everybody is guiding people, you yeah. okay what else like apart from this particular aspect uh, apart from this mm, in terms when of when are you planning for your first conference my first conference i'm planning as soon as i start doing my mbrs so whatever yeah. uh, masters research that we have to do based on that i'll be preparing a paper which i want to take up to conference mm-hmm. and also i'm planning to go for an international conference mm-hmm. uh, okay what one tip that. which you would like to give to your juniors or upcoming students okay uh, the tip would be to first of all to bring a strong research profile if you want to get into a good institute second most important r- tip that i would always give is to be self determined to do your research mm-hmm. there is no shortcut there is no such thing that ek bar interest aaya to chalo phd karte hain it's mm-hmm. not like that you have to be self determined it's a long journey even if it's 3 years people who complete it in 3 years if you ask them it's a journey that is full of struggles so you know be self determined to do this mm-hmm. there is for me that that works the best the fact that i want to do this matters more than anything else so even if there are other obstacles there are different things that the problems that you face you want to you know solve it and move on you want to do your research thank you meethi and i think uh, your your inputs are definitely going to be helpful to many other students who are looking okay. for research as a career choice very interesting career and it b- help us build our portfolio career apart from teaching we can be in consulting we can start our own yes, company yes. we can do corporate consulting we can yes. you know do research continuing on research so, so many aspects are there yes. so i'm sure this portfolio career i'm sure that spgen is offering that space scope yes, uh, wherein uh, a student can do and design uh different kind of careers after you know completing yeah, the course, fellowship yes. program see social science compared to natural science you know there's always this talk about natural science is more developed or natural science is so much more organized than social sciences true social science is not that structured and when you're trying to do research here it becomes much more difficult but when you do research in social science you come across insights that have not been done before you mm-hmm. understand people you understand the society around you so that gives you the opportunity to do things in your life that are more meaningful than what anyone else is doing mm-hmm. so i think it is important that whatever you are doing is meaningful to you and that's how it is going to stay for a long time as long as you keep hopping careers that doesn't make sense okay thank you so much for taking time out and for this lovely interaction bye bye hope it was helpful thank, thank you. you it's great to see you all here thank you for watching our work If you have not subscribed to Inkpot Hub Media, then please hit the bell icon and subscribe to our channel and support research celebrations in India.